So coming, coming. Out, well, it's, it can't be boiled down to coming out of this. There's so much more complex than that. But like yeah. coming out of this whole debacle and like this issue, like does this change your overall faith in the sport, perspective of the sport, like like investment in the sport? Like how do you like before this you had a perspective of track and field? Yeah. What is it now that you experience all of this? I'm a, I gotta be honest, man. My my perspective has been constant. Yeah. Since I've entered the world of professional sports. Yeah. Outside looking in, you see it like, oh, he in Monaco, somewhere in Germany, and and it looks cool, right? Yeah. A lot of us we post cool social media pictures, videos. Um. So outside looking in, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Excuse me, as soon as I entered into the sport, like I said, I never had the big contracts. So either I was working a job or somehow coaching myself, somehow trying to get my own deals. I was always doing a lot of work that I shouldn't have been doing. Um, so my idea, the faith of the sport has been constant, but I do have faith that it will get better from the efforts that we put in. Yeah. Since I've come in, you remember when you and I first met, mm -hmm. It was, I'm just trying to get a game. Hey, look, oh, you ain't got a deal? Check this out. Bro, just, hey, you ain't, you ain't making the money, stay inside. You're going to see some of the, the athletes that you looked up to, might compete, go party, might do whatever. Hey, man, just hang inside. Yeah. Get to know the meat director. Yeah. Hey, uh, present them with something. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Try to sell something there so they like, right, I'm going to just bring you back anyway. Yeah. You helped us bring more fans. You wanted to, any, anywhere I go, I try to do a camp. So my agents, and this is for any anybody that's trying to get into this track and field world, I tell my agents, just book me a camp. Just let me let me touch the people while I'm there. Yeah. So that way, while I'm there, hey, that's who I am. I'm triple jumper. Jump tomorrow at eight o'clock. Come see me. So now I've, I've built the fan base there, mm -hmm. right? Um, whatever the niche may be. I know you were teaching at one point. So mm -hmm. hey, take me to the school. Take me to some kindergarten, elementary, high school. Let me go touch the people. Um, so that's, again, those are the efforts, just to wrap this back around so it makes sense. Um, outside of that, there are things that are happening here in America, American Track League, uh, this new situation, TFL. TFL we hope that yeah, it pops yeah. off. Uh, those are efforts that, I, that I, I'm happy about. Yeah. And th those are the efforts that I've seen when I first got into the sport so my family can come see me. Yeah. So we could be on TV here in America. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So yeah. it's it's those things, those entities that I, I want to be a part of. Yeah. Because that's going to make me, make us seem and be more professional. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And and then we could we could support it. We could we could rock the gear. Yeah. We can we can we can have more. We have the best athletes in the world here. Mm. Right? We sure do. Best sure athletes do. in the world, but then when they're looking at us and Middle school, you know, we've done speaking engagements, middle mm -hmm. school, high school. They like, well, did you go to the Olympics? When are you going to the Olympics? <laughs> Everybody don't make the Olympics. Yeah. But look, I am that fast. Yeah. I do jump that far. I yeah. throw that far. Yeah. You should come see me. I'll be in your state Whenever. this yeah. summer. Yeah. yeah. Next yeah, yeah. winter. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But if we don't have it, try to catch me on YouTube. Yeah. So. So what keeps you motivated in between? the initial you know glory of seeing track and field be at its height would you want it to be to like to getting there like it's the track and field is not there yet so what is keeping you motivated still to come back even after you're you know banned by usada what's uh -oh. why how are you still still so motivated and what is keeping you so motivated yeah. um i'm motivated uh one to to show my son mm -hmm like what daddy does. I've always wanted to, as a kid, I always wanted to be a professional athlete in football. It was like, yo, I, I've never seen Craddock in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen William, have you ever seen the Crittenton? I know your no. name's kind of, no, right. No. So Eaton, there's a few, I mean. I, don't know. I feel like they're, but, yeah, yeah. But you know, you see, William, you see, you see the, the common names all the time. So when I'm watching the NFL as a kid, that was my dream. I'm like, I've never seen my last name. So I always wanted to be that. I always wanted to be on TV. Yeah. Hmm. Now that I have a son, I want him to be able to look, that's daddy. Outside of family, my goals in the sport have always been to just be the best. 
And so I still want to be the best. Yeah. That's honestly what keeps me going. I want, I've always wanted to be a professional athlete. So since we're still fighting to, to uh, describe what a professional athlete in track and field is, we're still building it. I think off camera, I said it only takes one of us. Just like we say in, in the jumps, hey, with you guys, it only takes one. Yeah. One perfect yeah, race. Yeah. One race, you one did change your life. One yeah. jump, it, yeah. it, it'll do it. So one season. It could take one season of people like, yo, why was Omar? I seen Omar at the Memphis thing when he first got off his band. Now I seen Omar at the American Track League. They have him in Phoenix now. Now I seen Omar at a Texas one and the Atlanta one. He in New York. When is he gonna go overseas? Mm -hmm. I just seen him in Jamaica and like the Caribbean islands, right? So I feel, now I'm gonna just get into it. I feel like that's how we gotta do it. Yeah. Right, and that's what keeps me motivated. I like to be a pioneer for everything. The, la the latest videos I posted was like the aerial view of me jumping. Yeah, that was I want dope. people to look like, appreciate that. And that, <laughs> yeah. that wasn't my idea, so shout out yeah. to that. I understand the vision, but yeah. when he sent it to me, I'm like, oh, this is cold. Like, yeah. But we don't, we don't get these different views. Mm -hmm. um, I tell people, field defenders, we're the heartbeat of the sport. I, we love you guys, yeah. right? But you out there for 12 to 13 seconds, yeah. then you gone. For sure. You same yeah. boat, the sprinters, nine to 10 seconds. The ladies, 10 to 11 seconds. 400 a I minute. Think about it like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're gone. Yeah. Outside of the 20,000, right? Yeah. Complete circles, we're out there entertaining people. Yeah. And the that entire you time. We have so yeah. many different personalities. Yeah. People see how I am. Then you look at the woman's side. Raven Saunders want to twerk all day, <laughs> right? She wear the whole man. I love Raven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. reaction is yeah. we the heartbeat. <laughs> Yeah. Right. After those 10 seconds is gone, then it's like, all right, what's the next race? Yeah. You can at least look in the infield like, oh, they go this guy with the glasses again. Yeah. yeah. They go Christian Taylor. He, he missed a six jump. Yeah. They go Will Clay. He the, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It's always some kind of something. Yeah. So yeah. that's what honestly keeps me going. I can go on this all day. Yeah. yeah. Me, Will, and Christian, I feel like we've been the big three since we come out of college. Mm -hmm. And that whole big three thing. It's been put on us like through Twitter, right? Mm -hmm. When uh, it was LeBron, Wade, and Bosh. Mm -hmm. And then I think Dendy gave us the name, mm -hmm. honestly. Yeah. When he was in, he was like, oh, yeah, y'all to be. And, and I'm going to put this out there again. If my brothers would, <laughs> if we would train together, we would, we would really, we would, we would, we would destroy the world record. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 I don't think nobody can train the way that we train. So yeah. those are the things that, that keep me hopeful. Yeah. Um, that keep me going is because I truly love competition. If if the Diamond League of all this was dismantled, if y'all was like, let's go race, let's get it. Yeah. It's how, how much we putting up though. Yeah. Let's get some people from the neighborhood. We in Phoenix, yeah. cool. Let's just call them. Yeah. Hey man. Yeah. One, two, three. Hey, who you got? Yeah. Let's let's yeah. just do it. So I just love competition, yeah. man. Let's just. For sure, yeah. I think you definitely do, and it's it's bringing me back to one of my earliest memories of you. Well, not earliest, but. My favorite memory of you was when you wore the hard hat. Oh, <laughs> that is my favorite Omar. Yeah. My God. Oh, I, I just remember watching you in your element. Like, yeah. you didn't care anybody. I was like, Omar, why are you wearing a hard hat? A hard, yo, hard yeah, hat, hard like, hat. To, to the jumps. He's like, yeah, I'm about to go to work. Come on. <laughs> I'm going God. to work. And that, that, that gave it my gosh. Video. Yeah. When we ride in our cars, you see hard hats, you know, they, them men are working. They are working. And that's honestly where it came from. Uh, I was living at the training center in Chula Vista, and uh, they just started doing some remodels and um, seeing a bunch of hard hats. And I'm and every morning I get up like, hey, y'all using that, y'all using that hard hat? Hey, you know, I hold that hard hat right there. Yeah. <laughs> it was five in the morning, and they would start coming rolling in. All yeah. the athletes still sleep, yeah. so. I'm getting my just my meditation on read, go run, come back, and then they just get busy. By six fifteen, they get busy. Yeah. And I'm like, these men going to work. Well, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm just like, hey, <laughs> hey, I go to work. I go to work. <laughs> and then the, the, when the when the championships was coming, I said, oh, I'm finna f these boys. Yeah. Up. And that's it. And that's the thing. I, I love competition. Yeah. I love I love like comp to me competition is yeah. Let's see who who's the best. Yeah. But it's also, how can I get you out your game? Yeah. 
because it's it's more of a mental thing. Everybody says that, oh, right? Yeah. We do these for interviews. Sure. For sure. Oh man, I worked on my mental the most. Are you really? Because <laughs> if you compete against me, I'm gonna tax yeah, you. You gonna test it? Yeah, for sure. I'm definitely gonna do it. So <laughs> yeah. you see somebody That's coming thing I, need to, I need to add some add some play in my. Try hey, to get under people's skin. Hey, that, and that's that. It helps. It it helps yeah. me because it's just I'm confident in what I can do. Yeah. Whether when we release more of the mic'd up situation from Memphis, mm -hmm. you're gonna see. Oh, I, I was confident. Yeah. Even in that little clip, I'm like, well, I ain't gonna be worried. Yeah. I ain't gonna be shocked. Like, yeah. I'm ready to be dog. They in trouble. Yeah. I'm talking my talk. Just because I'm that confident in me. Period. Yeah. Yeah. It don't. It doesn't matter. I've been off two years. Just about. I like me. Yeah. Yeah. I like me. Yeah. So. so to bring it back to the to the your last competition, your earliest post on Instagram, you trying to get a whole group of people yeah. to go compete. Yeah. Could could you tell me if that happened and yeah. you know or did it did it pan out how you wanted to and so and it, how does the fear of competition, you know, kind of stifle yeah bigger yeah. performances or just y'all meeting up in general? So it didn't happen how I wanted. Okay. Um, but that was to show everybody across the board, all athletes, not just the jumpers, but all the, my 29,000 followers mm -hmm. is, we have a lot of ducking in our sport. Sure right? do. You got sprinters. I remember, and yeah, I don't know if yeah. this is true, but we had Usain, we had Justin. Oh, Justin, you duck, you ducking. Oh, Usain ducking, ducking Justin. Oh, now we got the young Coleman coming up. So whatever it is, somebody's ducking somebody. So. I'm not ducking nothing. I ain't ducking no fade. If you call me out, one, uh, you know, you gotta you gotta be able to compete, right? <laughs> everybody everybody yeah. just can't call me. I'm yeah. gonna show up. Yeah. Yeah. But so that was that was the the premise behind it. Um, Ed Murphy Classic. They I've never seen them have triple jump. American Track League has never had triple jump. Mm. So I'm like, well, Christian Taylor, your agent runs the American Track. I'm like, why don't you have triple? Cool. It, it is what it is. Like I said, I like to pioneer things. Yeah. So here, here it goes. Find a contact. Hey, yo, look. I think I messaged them. They messaged me back on the DM and was like, "Hey, let's just get on the call." As soon as I seen it, hey. And and if you if you watch the Memphis interview or, or the uh, yeah, whatever you call it, uh, the press conference. Press conference. Mm -hmm. That was uh, I think Eddie was like, yeah, man, you. I was there when you called. Actually, this was our one-on-one -on -one conversation at the house. Yeah, yeah. He was yeah. like, I was there. You called and was like, we need the triple jump, man. What's up? Let, let's let's make it happen. So that's how it went. Um, hit him. Hey, how can we have a triple? What? However, the text message kind. It's still up on my Instagram. Mm -hmm. However, it went. He he just said, this is Max. If you get the athletes, we'll have a triple jump. Done deal. Cool. So we yeah. we live in a sport where people duck. Here it is. <laughs> You take it as you want. Yeah, I'm calling you out. I ain't got to say too much. Yeah. But here it is. Yeah. Here's a competition. It's not like some made up meat. It's a silver meat. It's an American track lead meat. Yeah. It's, I think it's a rated B out of A through D or something like mm -hmm. that. So it's a, it's a one is A, two is B. So cool. It's, 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 a, it's, a, respectable it's a legit meat. meat respectable yeah. meat. Um, and I tagged all the top jumpers. Pedro Hughes. Um, Jordan Diaz, Will, Christian, all of us jumpers here in the U.S. The only one that showed up was Chris Carter. Wow. Um, they had to find the rest of the athletes. At first, as you see, and I leave it up there to show all the athletes, I'm there. Let's do it. So it was showing solidarity at, at, at one point. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, um, yeah. Excuse me. But still, the hope behind that is to show, like, look, y'all were with it before. You see the turnout. You see this, the aerial view. You see the mic'd up. Now, when we do this again, <laughs> you might want to be a part of it because it's going to get bigger. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's again, my, my, um, my way of adding to the sport, right? Um, and so, and that's, that's just how that, what that came about. Okay. It didn't turn out how I wanted it to, but I'm thankful Chris Carter showed up. Yeah. He was one of them that, 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 um, that I tagged. And then I'm thankful for the other two, two athletes, uh, do airlines. Mm. And I just met the other app. I can't remember his okay. name. I try to be respectful. Yeah. But, you know, I'm only yeah. disrespectful at the at the event. But, <laughs> any other time I try to be that's dope, man. That's yeah. that's cool. Well, um, we we didn't officially we didn't officially officially 
welcome Omar back <laughs> yeah, to, the, to the grind. To the, yes, to sir. The, to the ladder. Yeah. Let's go. So, yeah, uh, welcome back, bro. I appreciate that. Always, yeah. always glad to have you around, bro. I remember when I first met Omar. First, uh-huh. first, first time overseas. Yeah. I had a shirt that said, Jesus is dope. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. I had a shirt that said, Jesus. I went in to just kick it with some people at the hotel. And Omar saw my shirt and he thought it said, Jesus is dead. Oh. Yeah. He's like, uh. We gonna have to have a conversation. <laughs> yeah, right. What you mean? Your shirt say Jesus is dead. I said, No, bro, no, 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 no. Jesus, let me, let me, let me show you. Jesus is dope. Yeah, yeah. From then on, we've been kicking it. Yeah. I asked him to be my mentor, bro. Yeah. He showed me the ropes. Like yeah, my man. first time overseas, I was like, I don't know nothing. Yeah. But me and Omar was there having conversations, yeah. having Bible study, praying, yeah. all that stuff. Yeah. And like. Every then at one then, point y'all had the same agent. Did yeah, you have TC? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Tony yeah. Campbell. Yeah. yeah. So that's what's up. So since then, shoot. We've been homies. It's been solid, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's again, I, I'm I'm glad you shared that because it's I, I feel like there's many moments like that. Um I don't know, man. I, I feel like I, I like to I like to be in in our neighborhoods, right? Yeah. Um I'm from the ghetto of Killeen. I'm from downtown Killeen, right? And uh Everybody that's from the ghetto or from the hood, they got OG. Even everybody got OG. Everybody Your dad is OG. They do. Your granddad's OG, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how I try to be on the sp- for the sport. Yeah. I'm, I'm not. I mean, even when I came in, I wasn't the oldest, but I had an experience that the older athletes didn't necessarily go through because a lot of them, when we come into the sport, we know all these. Like these are the famous athletes. Yeah. The sport is not as famous right now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm and I'm as a realist man looking at it like, dang. It's it's athletes like I said earlier looking in like yo, I can't wait to be pro, and I'm looking back like why? <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? What do you think? What do you think is so special? Yeah. Because this grind, if you don't if you don't honestly love the sport love or it. love yeah, to compete, sure. mm-hmm. why do you want to be a professional? Yeah. Because. Again, we post the pictures. Some of us going to keep it real. Yeah. But but we do, a lot of us, all of us post the good pictures. Because, mm-hmm. hey, let's make the cool A aesthetic. We're, we're trying to uh, inadvertently be uh, influencers. Because I don't necessarily want to be an influencer. Yeah. But I know, hey, companies like to see a clean-looking Instagram. Cool. Yeah. Let me, I, I bought, that's what I bought a camera for. Yeah. So any pictures when I would, again, any athletes coming up. When I knew I was going into negotiations, and I'm like, look, here's what you'll get from me. You're going to get quality. Mm-hmm. You're not just going to get a a cell phone picture of me like, you're going to get yeah, yeah, the DSLR. Get, yeah. mm-hmm. You're going to get the aerial shot. You're going to get all, you're going to get the works as much as I can, can, can do for your product with me in it. So I'm telling athletes, hey, look, cool. You want Nike? All right, well, it's a negotiation. It's a contract. Yeah. You can negotiate that. Yeah. If they don't want to go with it, cool. Take your talents on somewhere else. But we get caught up in, I need to shoe deal. I need to shoe deal. I was cool with buying two pairs, right? Of spikes, maybe two hundred dollars, one one ten a piece. Um, I do break spikes quite often, but I can at least handle some business through them, mm-hmm. right? And that's all I needed to do. I don't need, I, I have my own uniforms. Yeah. Since 2000, I came out in 2013, didn't sign nothing. 2014, I jumped for my for my club back home, Jump Court. Yeah. So I was wearing Jump Court, whatever it was, I'm cool on that. I bought the Mizuno Spikes. 2015, I signed with Adidas, so they was giving me the Spikes. But even then, all right, so I'm not getting paid. I have my own uniform. Yeah. 26, and then I think by 2017, I made my first one piece. I had a designer, shout out to Brian Nicole. Um, she made like two, three different uniforms for me. So that was, that's my way of, sh- again, showing the sport, hey, you want the Nike kit? Why? You yeah. want to be professional? Why? Yeah. I don't want the Nike kit. I don't want the Adidas. I don't want the Asics kit. Unless you're going to pay me for sure. Pay. But yeah. Yeah. I have my own. How about you wear mine? Mm-hmm. I got them on my website. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's to all the other athletes. Oh man, I can't. Well, you can make the money. Yeah. Because then once I've made the money, I've sold 50 uniforms at $50 a piece. Yeah. However much money that was, because I just I threw a different number out from mm-hmm. what I sold mine for. But I go to the company. Hey, look, I made 15,000 on my own uniforms. I made that right yeah. off uniforms. Yeah. 
I made 70,000 compete. I made 85. I need 100 for me. That's the second gem you just dropped this interview. <laughs> you see, the, 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 yeah. the second big one, though. Yeah. Like, these are things that athletes don't understand. Right. They need leverage. They, just, they don't come to negotiations with leverage. They don't come with any sort of facts or understanding of what their true value is in track and field. And that was one of my issues, too. How do you, what are we being measured on? Like, like how can you justify X amount of money for a, for a scholar or a scholarship, sponsorship, right. you know, when it's, when, well, how are you judging me on this? It's not solely based on performance. We know that it's based on medals and contention. But there's other athletes who have sponsorships and and they they don't get any. Medals. So like, right. what are you truly right. bringing to the table? What are you truly evaluating my success on? And I think you're able to say I sell. Right at the end of the day, these are companies. They want to sell their products. I bring awareness. I you know this many eyes show that I'm wearing this product and they like it and they're engaging with me. And then I also sold 50 you know units of my own things. Then uh, you know, companies are like, yo, you know, maybe I'll give a shot on, on Omar because he's he's not just another athlete with his hand out. Right. He's actually going about this in a in a completely different way that we normally may not measure success or or you know how we do our own products. But this is this is beneficial for us because at the end of the day, we want to sell run, uh, sell running shoes. Like that's that's the most important thing. Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. Uh, I think that's that's awesome. And the first thing you said was talking to the meat directors. Oh, that yeah. was one of my biggest things too. Yeah. That's why some of these meats in France love me. Like, Bingo, yeah. <laughs> oh my I'm, gosh. Gotta, I'm like, he got to be tied in. Uh, yeah. Yeah. First of all, you got to you speak a little bit of French, and they love you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're trying to learn their language or whatever. It's it's amazing. But I learned in 20, uh, 2016 indoors. Um, I was fed up with everything and I was just like, I'm just gonna have some fun, right? And yeah. I'm gonna make sure that I talk to fans and engage and I'm gonna make sure that I talk to meet directors and I'm gonna make sure that they know who I am so that I can get brought back next year. Um, and that was the best time I've ever had in, in a year of, of track yeah. and field, it was 2016. And it was engaging with the fans and they saw that value in me that they continued to bring me back year after year. It didn't yeah. even matter if I was running fast or not. They're like, Jared, you're such an entertainment. You're just such an asset to this meet. Yeah. You've got your own fans. They're coming back to see you personally. I want you here. And I think right. you bring that personally to a lot of meets too with your hard hat, with you doing your camps, talking about going to schools, because that's the that's thing that I did in 2016. Yeah, like that's man like you're engaging with the locals there and it means so much you're an american first right. I, people people downplay <laughs> we're yeah. big over there like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and yeah. we're, we're black americans too and it's yeah. like they're not really engaging with that a lot in their day-to-day -day life so to have a omar a freddie a guy who's run 13-1 in the hurdles and speak at the school, the local school, you know, where the yeah. kids are running 19. So, you know, and to inspire and yeah. to uplift, yeah. man, that is, that goes the extra mile. And those are the two key gems that you dropped that I just For wanted sure. to highlight, like, sure. they cannot be emphasized enough. Like, yeah, man, all these young athletes. Yeah. Hey, you, hey, you know, chop it up. I learned how to multi-kid, I got three kids, three kids. That's, that's yeah, good. I, I feel like we need yeah. more mentorship f from athletes like you to yeah, truly, to, to help guide a lot of these athletes who are just swimming in, in hopes and, and desperation of trying to attract that big Nike contract. Because I think yeah. they get into the game, like you said, you want to be a professional, well, why? Right, like you want to get that big Nike contract, it's not happening. These things are receding really quickly, right? Big Freddie, time. you're- More and more, year after year, more and more. My gosh, 13-1 in the hurdles, and we don't have a contract for you. Like, what more do you need, right? There's a point in the time where it's like, you're the best, you're top 10 in the world, you should have a contract. You would think that. Right. That's not the case, man. That's it's the, truly unfortunate. Uh, uh, what, what has changed a lot for me, especially coming back, and again, what I want to present to the sport is when I had one of my greatest years, right? Um, what was the 2019 when I won the, when the gold medal at the Pan Ams? Mm -hmm. I opened up the season, 1768. PR, 58 feet and a quarter. People thought it was a fluke, right? Um, you know, uh, Christian jumped at this meet, so they like, oh, well, it's only because Christian jumped from a short approach. Cool. But I still jumped what I jumped. Mm. The next meet, I think I won that in Utah, broke the record there. From there, I went to Japan, set a record there, still number one in the world. The next meet, I think it was still in Japan, but I, I met me and CT. Now Christian is at a full approach. So now it's like, 
let's see if this was a fluke. Like, did I beat him on accident or just because he was from short approach? He did beat me this meet, but it took all six jumps. He only beat me by maybe five centimeters. Yeah. Right? He went 1747. I think I went 1742. Yeah. But the whole meet was like this. Yeah. It was, it was, <coughs> I think Donald Scott was there. Um, I think that's it. That that out of athletes that were at least seventeen three and above, maybe maybe one of the China athletes. Um, but it was me, really me and Christian that were the show, right? And it showed. Oh no, nope. Omar's compete. I go to Rome. Same thing. I, I remember. I'm reading. Um, I don't know if y'all remember. Y'all remember track and field news? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You read form charts. Yeah. So I'm looking. I'm like, I'm probably number one. Number. Like <laughs> nobody t- messing with me right yeah. now. Yeah. Not Will, not Christian, not yeah. Pedro, not the one that they were, they're one. Mm-hmm. So I see Pedro in, in Rome, but I'm looking at the form chart. Oh, well, Craddock is, he's at his peak. This is his best. He won't be able to gave Pedro the business. And, and, and it was so effortless. That was the difference. What I noticed in 2019 out of the, the fall training I had, to the in season, tra- season training, um, we, we, we figure some things out mm-hmm. and no matter the competition i can compete to your level so pedro cool you, you jump whatever 17.3 cool i'm gonna go 1737 he goes 1741 i go 1744 and it was just, it was just like no issue my form might not look the best because I, I use a lot of grit pedro is smooth yeah. right yeah. but i use a lot of power and so I might not look the best, but I'm again. And to me, feeling it was effortless. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Three whole months or so, three four months, I'm number one in the world. Um, I think Will finally had got it and went like 18, 14. But during that time, that's my son. <laughs> yeah. He just wanted to get his camera. Yeah. <laughs> he trying to sneak on the camera. Um, what's up, Daddy? Um, but Will got it. But before that, being number one, I was, you know, let me leverage. Yeah. Y'all want me at the meet? I just, hey, let me get 5000 Let me get the appearance fee. No, I didn't want to do it. I'm like, all right, 2500 Like, let's, I don't get appearance fees anyway. You can give me 500 Yeah. Let me just get an appearance fee. Yeah. yeah. Uh, never got it. And so from then, I'm like, all right, so being number one doesn't matter. Okay. Obviously, they just want medals. But it was just showing me, well, if I stay in America and 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 I just go to a meeting and say, hey, just announce I'm number one in the world, the, the eyes will be on me. Yeah. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, bro. And and so even there's been a me there's been a few meets that have gave me appearance fees. Not in Europe. Well, one in Europe, right? Off of like, yo, we want you here. Yeah. That's where I want to compete. Yeah. I want to compete where I'm wanted. Yeah. yeah. So with that being said, just to roll back to something we said earlier for our sport, our people want to see us here. Oh, for sure. You from where? From St. Louis. Why don't you compete in St. Louis? Why don't your people like to see you there? Oh, for sure. If you everybody were still competing, would. Bro, you would turn that stadium out. Now, here's here. I'm going to throw this one out here, too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> where are you from? Philly. Outside of Philly. St. Louis. St. Louis. Yeah. I'm from Texas. What other Philly athlete you know? Uh, Nia. Darrell. Darrell, yeah. Some the list goes on, yeah. Yeah. What St. Louis, Missouri? Me, Aaron, Mike Rogers. Mike Rogers, right? Yeah. I got the Texas athletes. Can we not put them in together? Oh, all right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I've I've done I've done work getting my own sponsors. So at this point, hey, look, we sit down the local Cadillac. I love Cadillac, so <laughs> sit down with the local Cadillac. Cadillac hey, look, Cadillac, Cadillac. bingo. Yeah. Hey, look, man, uh, this who I am. This is what I do. We we having a I, I, I'm working on a competition in June of next year. Uh, you know, some of my my, my cousin plays in the NFL. Marquise Goodwin. Um, he might want to come out of retirement and do some long jump. I think, you know, y'all, that's some money to sponsor. Like, I, I know some sprinters, hurdlers. I'll do seven, seven events. Four men, three women, all different, right? I feel like if we do sport this way, it'll teach the public about our events, yeah. right? So as opposed to all the events in one meet, trying to catch you on ESPN, 
if we want to have time slots like the NFL, right? Yeah. We got to have men's triple jump, women's long jump, 110 hurdles. We could throw a 5,000 in there, shot put, pole vault, 800. Let them do their thing. That's that's at least an hour, two hour window. However you, you fix it up. Mm. You can show each event, right? Show the jump, show a few jumps, not just the top three. And you educate the people. That's a that's a Wednesday meet. Yeah. Friday, now we got the women's triple jump, men's long jump, one hundred meter hurdles. We switch up to seven, that's a Friday meet. Sunday meet. You know what I mean? We, now we keep switching it. So that whole thing again with us knowing the athletes. That was the purpose of the post. Yeah, I can tag you. I got some of y'all numbers, but I want to do this for the public. Yeah, come to the meet. So it's gonna turn up. So what's what's the disconnect then? I, I feel like we've and it's so crazy. I love my favorite thing from traveling overseas is when we all sit down for dinner, bro. Like, mm. you, oh, first yeah. off, you're looking for people who speak English, so that you're going to just gravitate <laughs> for that. But the idea spread between us, man, are truly like revolutionary like they're so innovative like i've i've spoken to queen i've spoken to kim collins oh my uh, god the idea some collins of these guys did. have are just like man if we could put this together but it always but seems to always, just yeah, be conversations conversation, and i don't you know, know i have my own ideas right how to try to get things in action but like for you omar what's keeping that next level you know evolution of money. our sport right money flat flat that's, that's what happened, I don't know if so, y'all seen Oh, sorry, no, no, I'm sorry, not to cut you off. On Instagram recently, um, like I said, I, I don't shy away from no smoke, mm -hmm. right? I, I want, I invite it. Yeah. Chris Carter and Donald Scott was going at it on. I saw it, I saw it. I, I caught it on the tail end. <laughs> I wish I would have like looked like like four hours earlier so I yeah. could watch the whole thing. I they saw they ended the, up deleting it. Oh, <laughs> man. Somebody got screenshots, I'm sure. Somebody do. I saw the last post. I was like, I missed it. I, I saved the one because they tagged me in it. And uh, excuse me. Um, it come down to money because Donald didn't come to Memphis because of money. That was his whole thing. Had he came to Memphis, he could have, and like he said, so he was like, uh, Chris Carter posted the, the thank you card that they sent us and was like, you know, if if only my comrades would have came to the meet instead, I'd be shooting big slow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> instead of if my if my comrades would have showed up instead of going to the Diamond League to to place in the back of the pack. Oof. Oh, you mean oh. bingo? Yeah. So then Donald responded, like, "Oh, I got time on this flight." Yeah, at the Diamond League, he did. The Diamond yeah, League. but he came out. I think fifth, maybe. Yeah. Um, I think Christian came in like six or seven, and then Chris Bernard came in like last, maybe or maybe ninth. So, so Chris like boo, boo. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> Donald, like, I got time on this flight. I just, yeah, I jumped 16-4, but my 16-4 would have beat you talking to Chris. Uh, yeah. Then he was like, but it would have won the whole competition anyway. But if the competition wasn't centered around one athlete and it would have made sense for me financially, I would have came, boom, boom, boom. And then Carter responded and was like, uh, well, Omar lost anyway. Like, still come because it's, it's bigger, I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, it's bigger than yeah. the instant gratification. And I get it, we all got kids. Y'all hear my son moving around. Chris Carter has two little girls, Donna has a little girl. Yeah. Um, Will is now a father, right? So it's a lot of us that have children out here. So obviously all of us want to feed our family. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but for Donald to point out, if it wasn't centered around one athlete, it, it, I just brought it to, to life. They weren't gonna have to meet unless I hit them up. Yeah. But you were invited. And it wasn't like they put a graphic out that just had my picture. Oh, I'll cry it out. Yeah. It, it, and honestly, they didn't do a lot of media around me. Yeah. They didn't, it was no Omar's gonna be here. It was nothing like that. Yeah. It was just that I guess because I initiated. Mm -hmm. Um so that was that was his thing. And and I'm seeing so Carter 
I love my bro. He's from, he from the great state of Texas, too. Me and him already have some things in the works for competing in the U.S. To answer the question, that's what it takes is us coming together and actually doing it. The finances is going to come. From where we come from in the neighborhoods we grew up in, they say all money ain't good money. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, uh, make the money, don't let the money make you. So if all money ain't good money, just because you can, if you win, you win $10,000 at a dime mm -hmm. you still got to pay a part of that flight. Mm -hmm. You might have to pay some of the hotel. They may take yep. over it all. Yep. Um, so now let's say you out. Let's just call it three bands. Paying fifteen hundred on yeah. a ticket and uh, a couple hundred on whatever, right? And on top of that, I don't want you to cut you yeah. off. Diamond League is cutthroat. Big. Oh, as yeah. soon as you're not jumping well, they don't care nothing yeah, about yeah. you. Just Fine. like I'm having that issue right now. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you have a meet in the states, they know you personally. They know you're going to invest in their meet. They're going to bring you there regardless and pay you money regardless. On top of that, it's in the states. Yeah, yeah like, like if you hit yeah. me and was like, "Hey, bro, this is my first meet." This is what's happening. These are the phone calls that I have. This is why I feel like it can work. But we have to be willing. We Since I came on into the sport 2013, those same conversations. Sonya, Batman, uh, Justin, uh, Lashinda Demas. Like, these are names that were phasing out, right? Mm -hmm. Where we were having the conversation, and, and it's the same thing that we're having today. How do we make a professional? How do we do this? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Hey, how about this? Don't go. <laughs> yeah. Don't go to Europe. Yeah. yeah. Go. Okay, you can go. I know your, your contract might do this and that, but what, we can have something. We have the best athletes right here on this rock that we mm -hmm. live on. We have something like the American Track League that's trying to do something. Yeah. World's just finished. All right, Donald, you going to the Diamond League? Use this as a tune-up. You jump 16-4 over there. You got the plane on you. You yeah. got to travel. Yeah. You probably would have jumped 17 meters. You put. You could have won the meet, set the record. I personally didn't care. My thing was this: if I would have, if I would have jumped 17 plus, oh, they would have been hearing it from me. <laughs> but I'm two years out of the game. Yeah. I'm just trying to get my feet wet. I didn't care if you thought that I was the the, the main event or main athlete. Yeah. If you beat me, then what what happens? You become the top. The top you, you, yeah. you get the attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's the thing. That's ducking. You running at that point. Yeah. You chasing the money at that point. If I invited you to a meet, if the meet invited you to the meet, it's here at home. You talking about you want to feed your daughter. Guess what? She can come see you. <laughs> you live in Detroit. Yeah. It's a quick flight. You can bring it. I had my wife and my son come from Arizona. Mm -hmm. My dad come from Missouri. Yep. I had an aunt come from D.C. I had other people that was in Memphis that was coming. Yep. So if anything, that's the only reason why I had the, the, the crowd behind me. Yeah. They came. <laughs> <laughs> Your daughter had to watch you at home. There's no disrespect to bro. Mm -hmm. And I don't want, I know how, yeah, you know, I yeah, get yeah. passionate. And I don't want him thinking like, you know, I'm, I'm bringing up his situation and his family. Like, but it's just think about that. Yeah. Cool, the finances is going to be there. All money, not good money. Yeah. You didn't go win over there. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if he made the final. Um, I hope he does. Yeah. Right? I, I can't compete, so it don't hurt me none. But at the end of the day, that's how we make it happen. We take it from conversation, and we just enact it. Whether, whether the person's big or not. Whether if it's two meets of the season, you tried. If we, we all trade in Phoenix, all right, cool. Hey, yo, Paul. We got a good group of professional athletes out here. What do you think ESPN will do? Can we get a window? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, I, I'll get the athletes. Hey, yo, Freddie, Jared, what, what y'all doing? Mm -hmm. Paul. Hey, Darrell. We got Brian in the discus. So if Darrell's going to throw, Darrell's going to be like, hey, yo, Ryan. If you're going to yep. run, hey, yo, uh, uh, Roberts. Yeah. Uh, Jared, come out of retirement. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, What's my bo what's my boy? I don't want to. But anyway, it's too many names, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Will, I'm jumping in Phoenix. You from Phoenix? Pull up. Yeah. No matter the purse, it might be five bands. Cool. It, it is what it is. We got Facetime. Now the people know who they're looking for when it comes to U.S. champs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now they know what they're looking at when the Olympics start to come around. Yeah. But we got to start doing it. Yeah. That's the difference, and that's what I'm trying to do as a vessel. Cool. We've had we having a conversation here. Hopefully. Like a lot of other uh, videos, it go viral. Yeah. And people are like, you know what? That makes sense. Yeah. Hmm. Two meets out of the year? Yeah. I got to do 10 meets anyway. 
Use them as warm-ups. I don't care. Yeah. yeah. The public, the high schools, the middle schools, the college athletes going to be like, I got to see him run, jump, throw. Yeah. That was something so special when y'all ran at Chodor, uh, Chandler Rotary. The, uh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. gosh. That was yeah. amazing. Yeah, that was high. Exactly. Yeah. In front exactly. of the whole, all the high school kids yeah. and stuff like that. We're was, working on something for that, too. That would be, yeah. be really yeah. dope. We, we, we working on something to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. Bring more prof I plan on jumping this time. Yeah. Um, you jump, you jump one of them years, though. Not, I, not I was this. just there. Oh, okay, okay. I was just there. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. We, we want to bring it. Yeah. And again, we got to do the groundwork because we see the agents not doing it. We mm -hmm. see the meet directors not doing it. Yeah. We see ATF's not doing yeah. it. Nobody's doing it. But we're talking about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know the athletes. You know that I know the athletes. Yeah. 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 Here's one more. And we go to the next topic, whatever the next question. Myself, well, me and Will talked about this. We was like, bro, let's make a jump series. All right, cool. In the U.S. I'm from, I'm from Arizona. You from Texas? Christian from Georgia. Oh, and this is the time. We're oh the top three. God, bro. Be dope. What? That's the <laughs> <big> <laughs> three of the biggest cities. Come on. What? The Easy. biggest states, whatever. We, yeah. we never, we never got around to doing it. Um, I don't think we necessarily can get everybody on the same page. Uh -huh. yeah. But that's just that's we have the conversation. Hey, I'm with it. Cool. Yeah. All right, I got I got five thousand of my own money. Yeah. Now let me go find the company. If I'm from Colleen, Texas, it's not a rapper that's not gonna invest in me. <laughs> I know all the local rappers, you mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? The food spots, they're gonna invest. They're gonna everybody, hey, all I need is fifteen hundred. Hey, can I get five from your car company? Hey man, like so look, this is what we trying to do. We we looking for ten thousand. You can can you get that or you know, what do we need to do to help you get that ten thousand? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look, and and I think I can get ESPN on this. We have this, this different medias, X, Y, Z. Hey, would you mind just sponsoring the youth? I want to have a youth race. Here it is. It, this is it's three different. It's, it's one in Phoenix, one in Texas, one in Georgia. Y'all want to be a part of this series? These are and then use their names. Christian Taylor's a gold medalist. Will Clay's a silver medalist. I'm from the city. Mm -hmm. I'm a gold medalist in the, from the Pan Am. Would y'all want to be a part of this? I think this will be big for the city. Yeah. Hey, and your car business, and your restaurant. Yep. That's, yeah. But again, we got to want to do the groundwork. As athletes, what are we doing anyway? We go to practice, <laughs> we wake up, eat your little breakfast, <laughs> go train, lift your weights. Come a on, lot of us play the game. Play yeah. the game, <laughs> read. Yeah. What do you want for your sport? How yeah. are you trying to help the sport? Yeah. By just competing, it's going to continue to die. Yeah, that, that, so, I agree with that. Yeah. yeah, well, I guess we left off at... Um, yeah. What was it? Um, performance. Oh, making sure that these conversations have oh, some yeah, action to yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, and then my thing is being one who's not shy of the light, right? Center stage, everybody look at Omar. You're very vocal as well. Um, how do you balance the mental pressures that are bestowed upon you? Because I think, well, not I think, in track and field, when you have a voice, when you have some sort of like uh, personality, you're only allowed to have one if you win. So right. I'm not, I think a lot of athletes want to showcase who they truly are. I think we have prominent ex examples of this throughout our sport who, you know, bring entertainment, who bring some sort of like flair and attractiveness to the sport, but get truly kind of like hammered because they're not winning gold medals consistently. And then the ones who are don't necessarily have that. And just one person that came to mind was Sydney McLaughlin. And I think she got that beat out of her <laughs> like yeah. really quick because people yeah. didn't like some of the things that she was doing. And we had this conversation mm -hmm. before. It's like, look at Sydney when she was in high school bubbly, truly charismatic, lovely, right? Yeah. And then it's been a complete shift as to, and I, Freddie had reminded me of the time that she was just crying on an Instagram Social or a YouTube media, video. Yeah. And it was just like, like, like she couldn't handle that pressure. And that was a stark change from how she was to how she is now. And I feel so bad because I know she's suppressing a lot of these emotions. And now we look at her and it, she be, looks like a robot. So. For you, how have you managed or how do you continue to manage all of the pressure from your own expectations to the world's expectations to your competition's expectations and, and view of you? How do you how do you still, you know, wake up in the morning and say I'm still great? Um, 
I only take on my own expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, that way I don't have to live up to somebody else's standard. And and in saying so, you, you said something about, you know, you, you, you only have a voice when you win it, right? Mm -hmm. um, when I create my own narrative, I'm winning all the time. Uh, and leveraging what I have. So if I have the 30,000 followers, well, they watch my social media. They might watch, hey man, well, oh, you came in fifth, but you you went out there and did that shit though. Yeah. You handled your business, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, I'm i one, and I think if people was to back date or backtrack some of my tweets or however folks be finding stuff, I'm always saying like, you gotta applaud yourself first. So I applaud, I, apl I like me, I said this earlier in the part, I like me so much that whether I win or lose, I'm gonna be the one that's gonna talk the most about me. Like, man, it, well, this is why it happened. If I read somebody's article, well, he looks like, well, maybe this is, no, that, that ain't what's going on. So then I start taking that on, that's gonna be, that's too much. Yeah. And I believe that's what Sydney got to when she was mm -hmm. crying on the social media, or it was about her like being pretty or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, well, girl, if you're pretty, you should think, you, I think, hey, I think I'm the most handsome man walking. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm so pretty. <laughs> hey, it, what's it's, that it's, yeah. <laughs> I'm so pretty I make something happen. I don't know what he said. Hey, yes, what yeah. did he say? I, I don't know my name anymore. They call me handsome. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's it. Like, you go to punchline. Yeah. There you go. I couldn't, I couldn't <laughs> dig it up. <laughs> Not that specific quote, but I was trying to hit a punchline, but I couldn't hit it. So yeah. I hit it. You hit it. Yeah. Knocked it out the park. But that's what it is, man. Yeah. It's, it's, it's honestly... When you when you are a crowd of one, when it's not, I'm not doing this for you, you know? I might do this to entertain you, to show you like how far the human body can go. But when, if you if you have something, what's, when, I'm gonna put this proper, right? Um, I think E.T. said this about, you know, it's his famous one. You gotta want it as much as you wanna breathe or mm -hmm. something, right? If you want to be an, an your, your 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 goal is to be an Olympic gold medalist, and then you get to the trials, and you don't make the team, and then you quit. You never want to be a gold medalist. That that just honestly wasn't your dream. So if you stick to what you already said, you're gonna be all right. Mm -hmm. The the only one that's gonna bother you is you. You are your biggest critic. That's what my whole, when I started The Room to Improve, you are the biggest project you'll ever work on, right? So if you realize that, no matter what they say or they do, you getting it out there. You putting the energy out there. So whether I'm winning or losing, Memphis was the prime example. I still felt like the star. Yeah. I lost, I came in third. I didn't jump good, but look what's coming after that. The aerial view, people are like, oh, we need more of this in track and field. The one of the biggest things that I wanted from this was having Mike being mic'd up. I asked you USATF this for like six or seven years. This would have been my like my tenth year as a professional or going into right, so ninth year. Six, seven years of it. Hey, y'all gotta mic us up. At this time, I I don't have a gold medal. I don't have a bronze nor a silver medal. I made thirteen. Yeah, so I've been asked since I got on the, on the circuit since twenty thirteen. But I made that 13 team, the 15 team, the 16 indoor. Got injured 2016 for the Olympics. All these injuries started happening, but I was always top three, top five in the US, top 15 in the world, right? And I rarely dipped under 15. So being there, I knew, I knew the quality. I knew that I am I'm, I'm part of the prize, right? Um, so with that, it's just like, all right, this is what I'm gonna run with. Regardless if I win or not, so many people come come to me personally. Oh man, you got it. You just gotta, hey, calm down a little bit. That's that's some of the, that's what I get a lot. You gotta calm down. A little bit. <laughs> hey, uh, uh, but but it's it's constructive criticism, mm -hmm. and I appreciate it. So yeah. it's just like, all right, cool, and, I, and I'm gonna just run with that. I I I don't go with the negativity because that it only destroys us. Yeah, it's an opinion. Yeah. Like that's that's the one thing that kind of. It get under my skin is somebody else's opinion can have so much control of you only if you allow it. Mm -hmm. If you're consistently bombarded with that, right? How do you how do you build up 
the shelter to protect yourself from that. So uh, an idea is just Shikari Richardson that comes to mind, right? Like she is very proud, you know, she believes in herself. Wow. She has a lot of pride in herself and she makes claims out loud of what she can and what she hopes to do, right? Wow. John with a spoon. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do something about. Hey, sometimes you got the. That's how I'm actually scared. I'm in practice. Like, hey, hey. The way I would handle it. Oh uh, yeah, I guess it's oh, the yeah. it's the unwanted attacks on your page. You just said you got thirty thousand followers. Yeah. What about the other ten that come on your page for hate? They they woke up and chose violence and said, Omar's too positive. Why is he shot? Or why is he so happy? Why has he got so much, you know, charisma wearing a hard hat at the 16 yeah. trials? Like, why does he believe in himself so much? I might as well try my hardest to peg him down. And then you consistently get bombarded. Like, how do you, how would you deal with that? Or how do you deal with that? Because I'm, I'm, I know you get a lot of hate. Yeah, yeah and It just sure. comes with it. For sure. Uh, the scriptures, right, tell you to put on the whole armor of God. Mm. So I'm, I'm protected okay. from my head, the belt, the chest plate, my feet, my shins, my everything, right? Mm. And I walk like that. I move like that. Whatever room I'm in. Um, when it comes to what happens a lot in our sport and sport period in today's society is it's on social media. You can turn your phone off. You can log off. The way I deal with it, is I get on when I need to get on. We matching today. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, that's was not playing, by the way. We, yeah, we, we, we just, yeah. oh, we yeah. just, <laughs> 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 we just, we all wore red today. Blood, <laughs> 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 Everybody got red. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. But the way I deal with it is I don't have to. I get on for when I need to. Yeah. yeah. So. My example, you know, Shakiri had her situation. And again, that's what I would say. Hey, sh like, because everything, hey, the OG say, all money ain't good money. Everything ain't gotta be said. Everything don't deserve attention. So when my own situation was during the time of like COVID, the Olympics, Gwen was getting attacked a lot. Yeah, she was. She was doing her protests, whatever have you. Um, I put one comment under her post, and 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 it was a, it's a true statement, right? It's a it's it's honestly about just the history of where we live at here in America, and if that's what you protest, and all I said was, well, the same people that did X Y Z, rape, robbed, and murdered, are the only ones that's I can't really, but, but that's I'm paraphrasing what I said. It should still be up unless she deleted the thing, but I didn't name a race. It's a lot of people that rape, robbed, and murdered, right? To get mm -hmm. to where they are. A lot of people attacked me at that point. Oh, you racist. Well, I didn't say race. Um, you anti-America or whatever. Never said I hated America. Uh, so they started just throwing things on me. My DMs was flooded with, I can't wait to see you. I'll beat your ass. If some, if some guy was like Armenian. Why well, serve in a, in a US Army? And I think I responded to him like, well, are you this or are you? You have a confusion. Uh, there's a conflict within yourself. Yeah. You mad at me for, if you are Armenian, and, and it's a lot of so-called white people that's messaging me about what I said, what you upset about? I didn't say nothing about America. I'm just saying that there's some people that did this to people that look like us. and left it as it is. And they, they just, they went through. And so I just didn't respond. Yeah. I just like, I, if you're gonna, if, if you gonna see by me, come see by me. Mm -hmm. Cause, cause I, I get down, mm -hmm. I'm with that. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna allow you to disrespect me, mm -hmm. put your hands on me, but you saying this on, on the social media. And that's, that's just, uh, I don't want this to sound like an attack on anybody that deal with like the mental toughness, but Mental fortitude, you have to practice that as much as you practice your sport or your discipline. So for other things that I did outside of just ignoring, right? Because ignoring it, that's hard too. Mm -hmm. You ignore it, then you just like, ah, oh, damn, call me a monkey. Yeah. They actually wished death on my child before he was born, right? So it's things like this that I was actually dealing with. How did I overcome it? A whole armor oh God. I read the scriptures even more. Mm -hmm. I understood how, how special to God that I really am, right? As his chosen people. 
I, I read different books. I meditated more. I stressed more. I just took care of my body. Room to Improve is about elevating and bettering yourself. Journey, every time y'all see me put a globe somewhere, it just means journey. We all on this earth having our own experience and we're journeying through this life until we get to the next one. So right now my journey, if, if there's so many people that believe in the Bible, right? We have the book of this, book of that, book of that. Well, this is the book of me. And in my book, these are things that I do to overcome said enemy. Mm. And that's, that's taken care of here. So if I know, man, I'm about to get on social media, what they gonna say to me today? I don't go on there and, and that's the thing. That's why I be back here. <laughs> Cause she get on there sometimes and she hit them with, the, I know y'all wondering about me. Hey, now you calling it. <laughs> yeah, you, you bringing it in. Like, yeah. I'm only gonna call attention to the things that I wanna talk about. Yeah. When I do interviews, y'all, is, this is the best interview I've done in so long. <laughs> hey, good. No, good. <laughs> Need to be like that. Yeah. When I do interviews, I don't like answering the questions because, Omar, so where are you from? 31, man. You don't, you don't know I'm from Killeen by now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's your PR? You ain't doing no Googles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't like doing interviews. Yeah. I'm like, hey, I'm on, like Kanye. You ain't got the answers. I'm giving you the answers. Yeah. I'm going to answer yeah. the questions, yeah. and I'm going to put out into the world, into the media, what I feel like they need to hear, at least from me. Yeah. So yeah. that's just how I handle it. Let me handle it in this cool demeanor that I do it. I'm not resp- Why am I responding to you? If I got 2.2 million followers, and I'm looking at who's talking to me and I see the applause from this person, you're gonna get my attention. So you can screenshot that and put it on your story like, look who responded to me. Yeah. But if I respond to, hey man, you came in 10th place. You came in third. You, you was talking all this on your social media. You can't wait to come back. You yeah. came in third. You said, hey, welcome back. Hey, I appreciate that. My brother, I'm gonna make it personal. Yeah. yeah. My sister, my good sister, I appreciate that love. Yeah. So you can share that, because what I just did was something for them anyway. Yeah. I'm not giving you nothing. Energy, that's just yeah. it. You yeah. don't deserve anything. Yeah, that's true. You don't deserve it. And yeah. again, I have a son. That's what I want him to realize. You don't, they don't, man, they didn't harm you. Yeah. They harmed your mental? Cool, well, let's work on that. But you got to work on that. Yeah. Don't give it to them. Yeah. I don't, give, I don't give no no negativity. Hey, it exists. I take it and apply it to grind. Another quote from my guy, Big Spade from K- uh, Killeen, Texas. Big oh, Spade. Hey, <laughs> Spade say, if everything start in the mind, how great would it be to be able to find everything weak in a man? Take it and turn it to strength. Apply it to grind. Hmm. I'm taking everything that I'm giving. If it's negativity, I'm going to take that. Cool. You fueled it. I ain't going to tell you. But cool, you want my son to, all right, cool, you gonna see me when, let me make sure I'm always prepared. Cause there's people like that, you know? When I see you, I'm gonna beat your ass. All right, cool, so I'm gonna make sure, let me get my defense up. Let me make sure I'm I'm still watching myself. I'm always on, I'm always on point. You know what I mean? So that's that's how I'm I'm always, I try to be one step ahead. Yeah, I like that. That's that's deep, all right. Yeah, Too, too often do we, do athletes in general fall victim to the social media stuff and 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 it's commentators it's people who you would think are on your side that that will really try to 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 tear you down yeah. for just being who you are um so i was i was mentioning how a lot of us a lot of us as athletes tracking for the athletes claim to be christian excuse me but don't necessarily embody the things Christ did, Mm -hmm. Um, the hate, right? When it comes back to mental fortitude, I mentioned earlier, Christ had 12 people around him, but the whole world hated him, right? And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's John 14 or John 17, somewhere around there, where he's like, count it joy if if they hate you, because they hated me first. So when it comes to people being mentally tough, if a great majority of the sport believes in Christ, believe in the Bible, then that's where your mental toughness has to come from. It has to come, because outside of that, Colossians, is it Colossians 2, 8? Tell us not to believe in uh, like the philosophies of man. So yeah, of course, take what you take from 
you got to go to those doctors, right? Whatever the, the psychologist, um, whatever doctor you have to go, go to, take what they've given. But if you believe in the Most High God and Christ, you know that your toughness, your mental fortitude can come from what you read in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. that's, that's just yeah. what it is. Yeah. Christ was tough. All his disciples were tough. Paul was tough. If, if we, and, then, and then that's the other part. They villainize you. I was villainized at one point. I remember Will was villainized at one point because, you know, he, he making music. And so it's meets that's like, oh, we ain't letting him in. He a gangster. What? Huh? He a businessman. Yeah. He make music. He got clothes. He doing his thing. He making his money. Yeah. So, so if you villainize, then you go to the scriptures. Who was villainized? And then Saul, a.k.a. Paul, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he was, he was getting busy. And then he like, all right, I know I was wrong. Yeah. That's the other part. We got we to gotta, we gotta learn to be true to the man in the mirror. And with social media, Twitter, Instagram, we're we not being true to ourselves. Yeah. We're not looking in the mirror no more. Yeah. We're looking in the phone first, For sure. looking at those opinions. For so sure. that, that's just how, how, how I do it. I, I think I mentioned earlier the camera cut off, but... I got the depiction of Christ right here on my shirt. A whole lot, the hand of God coming down. It's a whole lot going on right here that's that's really speaking volumes out of the Bible. Right. Right? Yeah. I'm seeing it, I'm wearing it, I'm showing it, and I'm understanding what's going on. And so all of it can be embodied for especially for those that claim that they believe. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I like it. Um, you mentioned uh room to improve mm -hmm. twice i want to bring that back up what is that it's literally improving yourself that's it it's a mantra um to to understand that you can get better especially in our sport we we the sport relies heavily on gold medals and and all of this thing but if we realize if i'm just better in myself there are other things that will open up but if my focus is just straight gold medal, gold medal, then you got a door over here that's open and you're like, I, I don't have a medal. So I can't, uh, I don't have a medal. Well, I'm trying to get the Nike contract. Kind of go back to the conversation we had before on the woman that made my uniforms is, I went to high school with her brother. You mean she, she from the city? Oh, you a designer now? You live in LA? Hey, look, this is what I'm looking for. How much would you do it for? Off the strength? All right, I got bread. I'ma just I, I'll pay you some money because you're doing it off the strength. You're not like trying to hit me over the head with something. Yeah. So I'm improving myself by doing it that way. Room to improve started in 2011 when I didn't make the day team. And like I was saying off camera, I flooded the college streets with room to people when when we chopped this up, <laughs> you put this clip up, people gonna be I still got my wristband. Like NFL players, like I flooded the college streets. Because 2011, I didn't make the team, but my coach was like, hey, if you you train hard the rest of the year, I, I bruised my heel. Triple jump, we always get these heel bruises. So I bruised my heel. Didn't make, I didn't make it out of the regionals, and I, so I didn't make it to the national champs. Um, so I'm like, but coach, you know, I'll be healthy for USA's. Long story short, I got healthy enough to compete. Mm -hmm. Probably wouldn't have been as competitive because I had to sit out for so long to, to heal up. Um, but I was healthy, and I didn't get to go. Mm -hmm. But during that whole time, man, I got the room to improve. Every day I got up, got room to improve, man. I can get better. Room to improve. Hey, how you feeling? Oh, I got room to improve, man. I'm getting better. After I'm like, man, room to improve, man. And I think I just, Twitter started popping for me. I got Twitter in 2012, R2I. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Room to improve. Let's just shorten it down. <laughs> and then I, I'm like, how can I make this to where I did? I couldn't afford shirts. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like, how can I affect people with, cause everybody's saying it. I, it yeah. Instagram came yeah. around 2012 ish. Mm -hmm. I'm posting my pictures, hashtag R2I. Yeah. Omar room to improve. I got the room to improve. You got the room. We all got the room to improve. <laughs> yeah. So then I'm like, all right. And I can't remember. I don't know if uh, I received the wristband from something, maybe went to a party and I'm like, oh, this is cool. How much did these cost? It was like 35 to like 75 cents a band. Mm 
Yeah. I'm like, all right, so my fast will come in, that's twenty five hundred. <laughs> I get I live off campus, so that's another two bands. I'm gonna put five hundred to these wristbands. Did it, I got some glow in the dark joints. Yeah, yeah. So like at any time you wear it during the day, room to improve. It get dark, you still got it on. Oh, there go my wristband. I got goals, I got dreams that I can still accomplish. Yeah. So that's how it just started. And then it went from like I ran out of wristbands of the glow in the darks, then was like special yeah. to see if people would buy them. Then I'm like, oh, I sold them to like everybody that was doing track that was buying them. <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? I go to University of Florida, orange and blue. Yeah. Oh, we got the regionals. We got this meet. Baylor gonna be there. I gotta get green and yellow. I gotta get Oklahoma you took color. Them to the meet, bro. I was. He was. Folks were like, hey, <laughs> hey, when it come down to making what? money again, this is why when I speak to other athletes, you can make the money. So yeah. when I go to these companies. Look, I got room to improve. This is how I flooded them boys with the with the wristbands. Then I came with shirts next, tanks next. See, um, that's my issue. I started off with with hoodies and beanies. Bro, oh them. yeah. <laughs> hey. In the desert. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got a beanies, bro. I, I, I would have went with beanies. water bottles. <laughs> yeah. Water bottles. Then I need to take a couple steps back. Bro, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What is your dream? That hey, man, that the dream continues. That point. <laughs> and then, you know, on top of that, the other side, room to improve, the other, other side said dream big, B-I-G, believe in God. Yeah. So a lot of the so-called Christians or believers, yeah. man, I believe in God. I'm here. Gotcha. And then it's something that you, you can shower with it. Till, and if it pop, I got you one on discount. I think I sold them for like $2, yeah. maybe three, because it's like I wanted to make a little profit. Yeah. Um, but then it's like I had to, I had to ship them uh, unless I went to the meet. Yeah. Um, but that's, that's just how I looked at it. And that right there showed me outside of like stupid high school hustles I was doing I was like yo this is a business like yeah this how you really do business and and it was more so like marketing myself if I get better people start saying hey oh you got the room to improve I hey, remember R2I bro then it's like, well, so do you. And then now I'm going to these meetings. Hey, or don't forget, you got the room to improve. Hey, man, uh, the justice system, you got the room to improve. Yeah. It works everywhere. Yeah. You're trying to go to law school, you got the room to improve. You failed your, your bar? Come on, man. You got the room to improve. Study a little longer. Get around somebody. Yeah. <laughs> well, that is. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, that's just, that's, that's what it is. It's a mantra for everyday life and for mm -hmm. the everyday person. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what it, I don't have a wristband on now, just in case somebody say something. Like I said, 2011 was when that started, but it was something that it, it just reminded you, right? Yeah. You you finish the set, you look down, oh, all right, room to improve. I got another one in me. That's just how I kind of yeah. ran yeah. with it. Yeah. That's such a positive take on like bettering yourself, right? Like even if you failed or you did something bad, or even if you accomplished something great, right? There's always room for improvement. Bingo. It's just a, it's just a positive perspective, you know, on that, which which I really like. I think that's that's really dope. For sure, that's really dope, man. Yeah, <sighs> I Shoot. think that's that's the way that we can um again for anybody. If we look, if if we just go back to our sport, you got some of the number one athletes, Grant Holloway. Mm -hmm. You don't got the world record. Yeah, you got the room to improve. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Like it, it just works. My son got the room to improve. He don't even know what's going on right now. But he can't walk. Get them legs, get them, get them legs a little you know bit stronger. You know what I'm saying? Like, no. it's, it's, it works for everybody. Hold, hold that slide been a little bit, little bit better. Yeah, I always tell him, hey, man, swallow his spit. Swallow his spit. spit. So, but yeah, yeah, man. I, I appreciate y'all bringing me on. Of course, man. This is this has definitely been long in the making. Shoot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. This, this gave me the opportunity, honestly, to, to, to get out a lot of ideas I've been sitting on yeah, man. to reintroduce myself to the people. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's, that's, those are the two main things, man. And then just to hopefully over this whole time, time we've, we've been, been together, together you know, we, we, we drop a few, few things, things that'll give, give somebody some kind of yeah. hope yeah. Yeah. And, and determination moving yeah. forward. Yeah. 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 This, this was good. good. This was yeah. great. Any any last and, and final thoughts before we before we wrap it up? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad, glad this just, just came, came back, back to me. me. So float, float the backstretch. Back I like it because we, we always near the backstretch. So, so we, 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 we a part of the backstretch. Yeah. 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 So 
it, it, it worked, worked for the track, track right? Because y'all, some of y'all got to come around the thing, but. Yeah. Us in the field, field, we on that backstretch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To me, I don't, we don't even touch no backstretch. Nah, no, no. <laughs> yeah. It's literally yeah. like, I don't know. I wanted something that, I don't know. We really just came up with it on the spot. The first yeah. episode, we was like, this name, is, it can change tomorrow. Yeah. But like, we just kind of like stuck with it. Cool, and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it worked, it's man. something that, that resonates with every track, track athlete. Everybody in their in they mama ran the 400 at some point. Yeah. yeah. Get out yeah. hard, float the backstretch. Yeah. <laughs> Get out hard, coast the backstretch. Get yeah. your butt out hard. Yeah. And, do something with that back yeah. So like, I sure wish I would have known that in 20, like 17. My coach, Al Joyner, man, he had me, Jeff Henderson, right, Long John. Yeah. Uh, his son and this uh, para athlete named Mikey Brannigan. Mm-hmm. Um, Y'all was on a four by four. We did a four by four. Get out of here. Oh, what do you still have? You got a video? Yeah, like it's, it's floating. floating. I don't have it. It's, it's, it's floating the backstretch. <laughs> it's, it's floating the backstretch. Hey, and them boys have me on that anchor. Yeah, anchor leg. Eating two hundred. Oh, I'm out of there, yeah, bro. I get the two thirty. He said two thirty, not like two fifty. Nope. <laughs> not like. <laughs> that be broke down. Oh man. And, and I'll because here's, here's the deal. deal. Nobody, Nobody told me, hey. Get, get it out hard, float, float the back. back. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, this is great. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna slide. slide. Like, I'm cool. Like, yeah. I, have I have endurance. endurance. Yeah. If, if anything, anything by 300, I'm tired. Yeah. yeah. Right. But, but I, I didn't realize in, in, we, we are in last. Oh shoot. So, so the, the it's a guy, guy probably 150 away. So I'm I'm here and he's going and I'm one. I don't know how to get the stick. So I think I. I, I got, got it. Son. Yeah. By, By the time, time I got it, he was at 100, 120. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm eating. eating. I'm, I'm talking about, about do you, you think, think I'm going to really get boy? I closed the gap maybe 50, 50 meters. meters. I don't know. I, I, and this, this is just me, me, me running team. It probably was a little different. Yeah. But <laughs> I know I closed the gap. Yeah. I got to that 2, 200. I'm still feeling good, 230. I'm like, yep, right here. And, and I, I went, went from, from having, having some knee lift to just, just like scooting. scooting down the track. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm just doing one of these coming down, down the hundred. And, and Boogie, Boogie Johnson was it. Boogie, Boogie might have a video. video. Oh, shoot. Him, Him and, and uh, uh, another uh, athlete, Bridget Owens. Owens. She's, She's a hurdler. hurdler. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, at the top of the, at the top of the stadium, all I hear is Boogie say, "Get out! They coming! I'm in the last place. Nobody's coming." So, so I look up and I just point, point like, boy, I finished, <laughs> finished man. man. My legs felt like they was this big. Man. Dang. So, so you like, say you could take on Sydney in a four. Hey, hey listen, I, like I told TT, I ain't racing. I'm not racing. No woman that's looking that good. No. And when Al was like, when Flojo started keeping up with him in training, he was like, I know that means I need to stop running. So I told TT in our press conference, I said, look, I might be a 10 5, 10 6 guy. You, you run a 10-7, 10-8. I'm, I'm not, I'm not, not going I'm I'm to race you because I'm not giving nobody the opportunity to go, oh, she, she was on your heels. Heel. <laughs> <laughs> huh? She, she was? was? Oh, I thought I was going. <laughs> I'm hearing her feet next to me. No. And, and then that Sydney, Sydney, the one, one that came in like sixth place when she ran the 400 hurdles. Yeah, that one. Yeah, nah, man, listen. Hey, hey, man, I might. Had him, had him wide yeah. elbows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. see, then we got to fight. We got to do not, we can't be close. Because, nah, she's not, not going to walk me down. Yeah. I'm, I'm pulling. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Hamstring, piriformis, glutes, it's gone. Ribs, bro, I don't know. It's over with, so. Well, shoot, that's all we got for today, Omar. Oh, great, thank you so much for jumping in and, and coming on set with us and everything. Yeah. Um, it's been yeah, one amazing, of the best man. interviews I've done for sure, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I hope to have more like this. Like, oh, we definitely will. Yeah, bro. Yeah. It's, it's coming. coming. Nah, nah definitely. Yeah. definitely. So, yeah, that's all we got for episode four of FTB, Float the Back Stretch. Yeah. I can finally say it. It'll float finally roll off. Yeah, the, I used to say fun. Float the Black Stretch. Float the ah, Black Stretch. Yeah. Float the ah. Black Stretch. Ah. I can finally say Float the Back Stretch. But that's all we got for episode four. We appreciate What am I looking at? This we appreciate y'all for tuning in, and we'll see y'all next time. Next time we have an episode. Peace. See y'all. Yeah. What's that next to Damn, Tom, you made this? I'm t-
come.